Libya is one of the most complicated stories on earth. So complicated. I spent years trying to understand Libya. I went everywhere. It's one of the most difficult stories I covered. Gaddafi was in power since 1969. It was more than four decades, 42 years. When he was interviewed by the BBC, he said, my people love me. They love me, all my people with me. They love me all. He refused to believe that he will lose power. No one against us, against me for what? Or what, what happened in Egypt or in Tunisia will, will, will happen to him. People were scared. The city was surrounded by Gaddafi's security and the army. And the people, they know that they will do anything to stop the protesters. If we want to go anywhere, there will be a minder with us. We cannot use your own drivers or your own cars, so it's not easy to, to go around the city and see what was going on. We start trying to find ways to tell the story, despite all the restrictions. Just seven kilometers away from Zawiya, we were stopped by a military checkpoint, and at that place, our problem started. It was personal. I don't know why, whether it's because of my coverage or something else. I couldn't confirm that. But they are very angry from your reports. They opened the iron, iron door and then told us to get out of the car and then they quickly took uh, Gokte and Chris away. One of them, they hit me by his clashing cough on my back and then I dropped on the ground. Then I hear the noise of the gun behind my head. So uh, you feel that it's, that's it, it's, they're gonna execute, execute you. You think about everything in, in that moment, it's, it's not easy. Yeah. I remember and I couldn't control my tears. This two seconds because I was very angry and feel this kind of humili humiliation. And you can't do anything. Chris managed to hide one of the phones, small phone. And he told uh, our colleagues in the hotel and they start calling people who knows Gaddafi from any, any, any place on earth to, to help. When they opened the Iron Gate, it was a smoke still from the warehouse. They killed like 50 of the prisoners in the same location where we were. And then to hide their crime, what they did, they used tires, old tires, they threw it in the place and they put fuel on it and they burned the dead bodies. Literally, it reflects the worst of the Qaddafi's era. It's 
Unbelievable what was done to him. We saw them alive in front of the camera. And then a few hours later, they were all dead. The first few months after the killing of Gaddafi, it was promising. But all these problems emerged together, the legacy of Gaddafi and hundreds of militias were operating in the country. It was a really bad situation in the east of the country. Ansar al-Sharia were there. They attacked the American consulate in Benghazi and they killed Chris Steven, the ambassador, and three of his escorts. People of Libya, they couldn't believe that moment. Americans, all those who helped us to turn the regime to get rid of Gaddafi, to, they, they, you know the mentality. Libya is it's a Bedouin uh, country. They feel that it's a shame. At speed and in convoy inside armored vehicles is the only safe passage to this central district of Libya's second city. After two years of the killing of the U.S. ambassador in Benghazi, we saw first ISIS flags in, in the city. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then uh, General Khalifa Haftar emerged, which took the conflict to another level. I asked him, you are accused of being another Qaddafi? He said, no. But in fact, everything he did since he started his operation confirmed that he has this kind of uh, ambition to be the leader of the country. I think that he is true. How? If he wants to be a real person, he wants to be a real person. started the campaign against the government and the militias in Tripoli, accusing them of being terrorists. After this, he started his operation to what? he said to liberate Tripoli. I remember I went there to, to see what was going on on the ground. As you can hear behind me here, it's the last point to the south of Tripoli where the government forces are trying to advance more from the area which General Khalifa Haftar's forces came from. Four times Libya. It's always chaotic. I, I was interviewing the commander of this front. One of the fighters came and whispered to the commander, there's a fighter. We should leave this place quickly because it's the target. I saw the bombs coming from the fighter jet. They hit like uh, 500 meters in front of me. <laughs> It's not easy for a country ruled by Qaddafi's regime for four decades to survive unless there's international pressure. The election is promised later this year, in December. It's a key moment. If it happens, it will take Libya to a new path, to a new situation. But I'm scared that the militias, the warlords, if you leave them, they will never ever allow any election to remove them from the land.